Hey there and servus fellow travelers, my name is Chris and I'll be your guide for the day. I'm taking you on a walking tour of Munich, Germany and we'll hit many of the hotspots of the city such as Marienplatz, the Hofbräuhaus, the English Garden and many more. I actually used to live in Munich for a short period of time many years ago and have been visiting ever since because it really became one of my favorite cities in Europe. I really like that it feels more like a village rather than your typical city such as Berlin or Los Angeles. Without further ado, let's go ahead and start the tour. <music> Munich is the state capital of Bavaria located in southern Germany. With a population of over 1.5 million inhabitants, Munich is the third most populous city in Germany after Berlin and Hamburg. You definitely don't need a car, it's a very walkable city and the public transportation system is excellent and gets you everywhere. Munich provides a high standard and quality of living, making it one of the most, if not the most expensive city in Germany. Internationally, Munich is probably mainly known for the annual Oktoberfest. While it didn't take place the past two years due to COVID, it is scheduled to take place this year, kicking off on September 17th, 2022. I highly recommend you go and experience Oktoberfest in Munich at least once in your lifetime. We'll start the tour at the Karlsplatz, also known as Stachus, the west end of the pedestrian zone. Through that pedestrian zone we'll make our way to the Marienplatz, the heart of Munich. Right around the corner we'll visit the Viktualienmarkt and then we'll head north to the Hofbräuhaus. From there we walk along the Maximilianstraße and past the National Theater and Residenz to the Odeonsplatz before walking down Ludwigstraße to the Siegestor. And finally we'll visit the massive urban park Englischer Garten. Alright, we're kicking things off at the Karlsplatz, which is mainly referred to as Stachus, named after a pub that was located here until construction work for the Karlsplatz began. It's easy to get here by public transportation from anywhere in the city. I'll leave a link with the train map in the description below. The Stachus marks the start of the pedestrian zone to the west of the city center. If you're here during the winter time, you can go ice skating on a rink they set up and enjoy some Glühwein and Bratwurst. As you look east towards the pedestrian zone, you see the Karlstor, a city gate which used to be part of Munich's city wall from the medieval ages till the late 18th century. It served as a defensive fortification and a checkpoint. Now we're walking through the pedestrian zone with plenty of stores to shop at. And eventually we get to the east end of the pedestrian zone, our second stop of the tour. The Marienplatz is the heart of Munich and has been at the center of the city since it was founded in 1158. There is always something happening here like the Christmas market in the winter time, the city's anniversary celebrations or championship celebrations of the soccer club, club FC Bayern München. The building you see here towering over the city square is the Neue Rathaus, the new town hall and the Alte Rathaus, the old town hall to the east of the square. The new town hall is a bigger part built in 1867 to 1909 in a neo-gothic architectural style. The old town hall is about 400 years older. For some nice views of Munich's old town you have the option to take an elevator up the town hall tower of the newer building. It costs 6 euros and while you can get tickets on site it's recommended to get them online in advance. A well-known spectacle is the Glockenspiel, taking place every day at 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. and between March and October also at 5 p.m. So if you plan the tour better than me, <laughs> you can watch some of the Glockenspiel with important scenes from Munich's history, such as the wedding of Duke Wilhelm V to Renate of Lorraine in 1568. A short walk around the corner from the Marienplatz is the Viktualienmarkt, a unique market where you can buy fresh foods and delicacies offering exotic ingredients you can't find anywhere else in the area. When Munich's market at the Marienplatz grew too large, King Maximilian I had it moved just southeast of the Marienplatz in 1807. This new market square later became known as Viktualienmarkt. 
happened. There are multiple butchers in a row on one end of the Victualien Markt, and most people get a Leberkäse Semmel here, a sandwich with meat made out of corned beef, pork and bacon. Now on to the, well, should I say beer center of Munich, the Hofbräuhaus. Undoubtedly, it is the most famous beer hall in the world. On the ground floor you find the so-called Schwemme, where up to 1300 people can sit at tables and enjoy traditional Bavarian cuisine, wine and beers of course. Some of the tables have been here since 1897. Oftentimes there is a band playing traditional Bavarian music, making the experience even better. When you visit, look for empty spots at a table and ask to join whoever is already sitting at that table. You always meet people from all over the world here, but also locals, who even keep their own personal steins stored right here. Now, I want to give you a little bit of historic context. The Hofbräuhaus was built in 1589 by Bavarian Duke Maximilian I as an extension to the Hofbräuhaus brewery. It wasn't until 1828 when King Ludwig I admitted the general public into the building. On the third floor there is a festival room, which is where Adolf Hitler and the National Socialists held their first meetings back in 1920 and Hitler presented the Nazi party's 25 point program. When Munich was bombed during World War II, all of the rooms were destroyed except for the beer hall on the ground floor. The rest of the building was eventually restored by the year 1958. We continue our walk to the Maximilianstraße, which is known for luxurious shopping as you'll find plenty of boutique shops here. I guess it's somewhat comparable to Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. At the start of the street you'll run into the square, the Max Josef Platz, with the National Theatre, home of the Bavarian State Opera, Orchestra and Ballet. The building as you see it today is the third theatre, which opened here in 1963. The first theater was destroyed by a fire and the second one in an air raid during World War II. You also see the Residenz, the former royal palace of the Wittelsbach monarchs of Bavaria. You do have the option to visit the Residenz Museum and Schatzkammer, the treasury, for 14 euros. Tickets can only be bought on site and not online. The entire Residenz complex is huge and within the vicinity is the Odeonsplatz. While I was there, they were setting up and practicing for a classical concert, Klassik am Odeonsplatz, which takes place annually. The Feldherrnhalle, or Field Marshals Hall, which is here where the orchestra is practicing, is modeled after the Loggia dei Lanzi in Florence, Italy. It was commissioned in 1841 by King Ludwig I of Bavaria to honor the tradition of the Bavarian army. This was also the site of the so-called Beer Hall Putsch, a confrontation between the Bavarian State Police and the followers of Adolf Hitler in which the Nazi party attempted to storm the Bavarian Defense Ministry on November 9, 1923. This was the culmination of the Nazis' failed coup attempt to take over the Bavarian state. Not sure why, but it sounds eerily familiar. Well, in this case, the guy that instigated it, Hitler, was arrested and sentenced to a prison term. After Hitler was released and the Nazis took power in 1933, Hitler often spoke at the Feldherrnhalle and this area was used for parades and rallies. And this takes us to the next part of our walking tour, as we leave the Odeonsplatz, heading north along Ludwigstraße. You can see why this area was used for parades. It's a massive and very straight street. In the distance at the north end you'll see the Siegestor or Victory Gate, which we'll get closer to in a moment. The street was named after King Ludwig I and was the first paved street in Munich. We are passing the Ludwigs Maximilians University, the second largest university in Germany and get closer to the Siegestor which marks the border between the districts Max Vorstadt to the south and Schwabing to the north. The Siegestor was built between 1843 and 1850. The stone structure is adorned with a quadriga, a bronze sculpture of Bava Bavaria with four lions. 
In the 19th century, there were still mostly fields and meadows in the direction Bavaria is looking, where the Bavarian army would fight enemies in front of city gates which the inscription Dem Bayerischen Heere emphasizes. After the end of World War II, the then badly damaged gate was restored, adding the inscription Dem Sieg geweiht, vom Krieg zerstört, zum Frieden mahnend. Note that the Siegestor is located at the square called Münchner Freiheit and that is also the name of the underground train station here. A short walk from the Siegestor takes us to the west entrance of the Englischer Garten, the English Garden, a public park created in 1789 with an area of 3.7 square kilometers or 1.4 square miles, making it one of the world's largest urban public parks. It's even bigger than Central Park in New York. The name comes from a form of informal landscape called English Garden, a style popular in England from the mid 18th century to early 19th century. During the summer months, whenever it's nice outside, everyone flocks to this park playing volleyball and also lots of beer pong. My favorite spot in the park is the beer garden at the Chinesische Turm, the Chinese Tower, a 25 meter high wooden structure first constructed in 1789 and opened to the public as an observation deck in 1792. In 1944, the original tower burned down after being bombed during World War II and the group rebuilt it in 1952. Nowadays, the tower is closed to the public due to security reasons and can only be accessed by the bands that play at the tower. The beer garden seats 7,000 guests, making it the second largest beer garden in Munich. You can get Bavarian cuisine at the beer garden as well as Hofbräu beer. For those of you that like cemeteries, a 10 minute walk takes you over the main river flowing through Munich, the Isar, to the Friedhof Bogenhausen. It's a small cemetery, but there are some famous people buried, such as author Erich Kästner, actor Helmut Fischer, and film director Bernd Eichinger. The little church on site is also worth checking out. All right, now back to the English garden. We are now heading south within the park along the Eisbach, a man-made river flowing through the English garden, and it's a side arm of the Isar River. Swimming in the ice bath is not allowed, but it is not really enforced and therefore it's common to see swimmers in there. However, if you do, please note that the fast stream is quite dangerous and between 2007 and 2017 alone, eight people have drowned. Now, as we walk further, we'll eventually run into a very unique spot with a bunch of surfers that surf in the ice bath on this man-made wave. It's been here since 1972 and since 2010 surfing has been officially permitted but you should be a skilled and experienced surfer as it is somewhat dangerous. This is the end of our walking tour and from here you can head back towards the Odeonsplatz to catch a train. This walking tour of Munich can easily be done in one day, and you definitely see many cool and historical places of Munich. I really hope you enjoy the tour, and if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below, and I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and share the video with your friends and family. Also, I'll be releasing some more videos on Munich with other areas worth visiting soon. So stay tuned for that, and for now, I say thank you and Dankeschön!